This is Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Boxing. You are watching Sporting Icons. You don't need to be anywhere else. You know, when Ben Shalom and Boxer first got the gig on Sky Sports, what was it that I said? I said, give them like a 12 months, let them bed in. Then they'll start to build on it in year two. And year three, we'll see where it is that they're at. And we haven't quite hit year three yet. So they are kind of still at the feel-out process. Of course, they're still getting their feet under the table, trying new things. Some things will work, some things won't. Um, but of course, I've been seeing a lot of comments, pretty much from day one, really. And of course, especially over the last couple of months that Ben Shalom, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's putting fights out of purse bids. Um, he's inherited the machine of Sky Sports from Eddie Hearn. So there's no machine to build. It's already there. Just put on the shows and everything should be okay and yada, yada, yada. But, of course, a lot of these narratives are coming from what Eddie Hearn has said, that Ben Shalom doesn't know what he's doing and whatever else. And, of course, he left Ben Shalom this machine. But, of course, the part that he's leaving out, so, of course, when a lot of fans jump on what Eddie Hearn says and reiterate that through social media, is that Eddie Hearn has left out the fact that, yeah, okay, he left Sky Sports, Ben Shalom got Sky Sports, but he didn't leave any fighters with him. Okay, there weren't any fighters that Ben Shalom could go to. So he had to go through a lot of these small hall fighters and see if he can pull some out. And I think a lot of boxing fans got quite excited about that. The fact that um, you know, he would bring in people like uh, the Azim brothers. They're bringing Steve Robinson, George O'Connor and April Hunter. And of course, he brought in um, Savannah Marshall. And um, of course, then... A little bit later, some of the Olympians would sign and whatever else. But the fact that he had to start again, you can't compare. Does that make sense? You can't compare what Eddie Hearn left with and the kind of shows that he was putting on and the fighters that he had because Eddie Hearn left with those fighters. Those fighters, at least 95% of them, are still with him on his own. Okay? So it's not like Ben Shalom took over the matchroom stable. That's not what happened, I guess. So I think some people need to remember that. But also, you have to remember as well, because I do see some narratives that Ben Shalom just walked into that gig. How did he get that gig? But he's been around the small hall circuit for a good four or five years, I think it was, before he got that opportunity. Some of you will remember the Ultimate Boxer series and things like that. So he's been around and he has been cutting his teeth at the grassroots level, which... It's something that Eddie Hearn never did. By the way, I'm not having a go at Eddie Hearn, okay? I know a lot of people do, like Simon Jordan, they have a go at Eddie Hearn, where they say things like, um, you know, he was given the silver spoon. Cast your minds back, or just go watch the two podcasts that I've done with uh, Barry Hearn, where he says it quite clearly, that Eddie Hearn was dealt the hand that he was dealt with. In other words, the doors were there for him to open. He was given the silver spoon, but he built on it. And, and it's true, though, because not everybody can be given the silver spoon and turn it to gold. A lot of people can't do that, and Eddie Hearn has. So he's turned a very successful business into an even more successful business. So he deserves a lot of credit. But to go back on to Ben Shalom, he's self-made. He's like you and me. You know, going to boxing, didn't really know people and whatever else, and had to build relationships, and of course he was doing that at the grassroots level, and, you know, just to get his promoter's license, he had to borrow money to get that. So, again, it's not like he... Listen, I don't know his family background. I have no idea. Um, but, by the sound of it, he didn't come from a very wealthy background where they could just... OK, here you go, son. Here's 50 grand. Here's 100 grand. Go do what you're going to do. Go follow your dreams and whatever else. Not at all. He had to earn it. OK? And it's like... And I've said it before, so I'll say it here again. It's like me and probably 99% of you listening right now, that if we was to try and become a promoter in boxing and then become the lead promoter on Sky Sports, what are the chances of that? Very, very slim to none. Now, one or two of you may be able to do it, okay? Uh, but it's very unlikely to do it. So he has done very, very well. He's self-made. He's built this business from nothing. B-O-X-X-E-R, boxer. He's built it from nothing. That's his child. So, of course, when I see people like Frank Smith, and I like Frank Smith, okay, but when he's having a go at um, Ben Shalom saying that, Eddie, uh, that Ben Shalom doesn't know what he's doing and he's not a patch on Matchroom and what, 
and the things that Matchroom are doing, Benchalon Boxer can't compete. Well, ben, Benchalon created his own way into boxing. Frank Smith walked through the door and was hired by Matchroom. Boxer didn't hire Benchalon. Benchalon created it. Does that make sense? So he deserves a lot of credit. And no matter where he goes from here, he's made it. He has made it. He has made it. Because ultimately, when you're a self-made guy... Now, I don't know if he's a millionaire. I have no idea his financial situation right now. But he could leave boxing right now and know that he succeeded. Who else is going to be given the job on Sky Sports? How many promoters out there? And there's a lot of very, very good promoters out there. A lot of very good ones. But he's young, he's enthusiastic, he's got fresh ideas. And I think that's what set him apart from the rest. Okay? Whereas I think a lot of promoters nowadays, they are set on the traditional kind of situation. And if you haven't been to a boxer live show, as in in the arena, go. Okay? I'm telling you right now, go. It's an unbelievable atmosphere. And I'm not talking about the crowd. Of course, the crowd... They make up for it, of course, but the production of it. You can literally feel the heat of the flames of the ring walks and things like that. The music when they're introducing the fighters, um, Big Mo on the Master of Ceremonies and things like that. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It is. Matchroom is very, very good as well, okay? But Boxer, in my opinion, are just that little bit better. Just that little bit. But of course, they don't have... The, the fighters that Matchroom have to make up for it, of course. Um, of course, people will criticise Ben Shalom, they will criticise Boxman Sky Sports, and you know what, everyone's entitled to their opinion, and it's just the nature of the beast that is boxing. You're going to get critics. And you have to develop tough skin, and I think he is. And at times I think he's doing the right thing as well. I didn't always agree with it, which is that you don't have to be in front of the camera all the time. You don't. Um, I mean, for me, for a lot of you, we used to promote as being fr up front and centre, like Eddie Hearn is, like Callis Howland is, like uh, Frank Warren is, and whatever else. And he won't really doing that. He wants to make it about fighters. And he told me that one-on-one -on -one as well, about that as well. So he's not going to be out there doing 101 interviews. He's not. Which I think he should, because obviously he's very articulate. He knows what it is that he wants to say. He knows how how to express it in that as well. But of course, when you're getting bombarded with the same old mundane questions, what you don't want to be doing is, is going to a press conference or a weigh-in or a fight night and those kind of things and just do an interview after interview after interview where it's the same thing. It is the same thing. And one of the things that I like about boxer shows as well is that they don't show too much bias when it comes to media. Pretty much everybody has the same opportunity. They do. And again, with Ben Shalom on the weigh-ins and the, and the fight nights and the press conferences, he's not going to give IFL half hour and Boxing Social half hour like Matchroom do and everybody else two or three minutes. That's pretty much how it is on Matchroom. I'm not having a go, but that's just literally how it is. Ask any reporter out there. That's how it is. It's almost cutting off the market. At least with boxing, everyone gets the equal opportunity between five and ten minutes. And that's all you really need. So... I think people can criticise, and I think the biggest criticism will be the lack of shows, but that's probably down to the scheduling of Sky, isn't it? Is it down to the finances? Possibly, yeah. Um, could it be that this year is somewhat the tweaking period? Because, again, they haven't put on that many shows. They've signed up quite a few fighters, like a Martin Bacoli, a Lawrence Bacoli, Joshua Boatsy, and quite a few others. Maybe it's a case of they've put finances into those and next year going to start to reap the rewards again we're already going to see a very good fight with Joshua Bites and Dan Aziz very good fight so anyway listen that's my thoughts on Ben Shalom I think next year at the end of next year that's when he needs to be judged not right now I think it's a bit unfair criticism I do and again everyone's entitled to their opinion if you want to criticize criticize but you can't compare to what they're doing on Boxer and Sky Sports to what Matchroom and Design have been doing. Matchroom and Design have been doing this for a long time. Well, Matchroom have, um, I should say, because they've got the stable, they've got the experience. Benchalon Boxer are still building it. 
Okay, so anyway, listen, that's my thoughts. And all. of course, you drop me yours. And no, by the way, I've not been asked to say any of this. Okay, I'm not after anything. So anyway, that's my thoughts on it all. Best of luck to them. Drop your thoughts below. Click on the subscribe. Catch you next video.